So based on the title of this video, you probably already know what it's going to be about. But I still wanted to start this video with this picture and this relatively short story from 2022. Today this is known as 2022 Otter Environmental Disaster, named after the river where all of this happened. And I'm sure a lot of my European viewers will probably know where this river is located. But in case you don't, it's basically here. And so during the summer of 2022, there was an unusual, extremely sudden death of a lot of fish, technically known as MME or mass mortality event, that resulted in a lot of dead fish everywhere in the river. I mean, this picture here doesn't really do it justice, but apparently it looks like this in a lot of different locations. And approximately 360 tons of fish were eventually collected from this river. And obviously all of this caused a major concern. But it was not clear what caused this. Some people blamed mercury pollution, some people thought that it was some kind of an oxidizing agent or some kind of a sewage leak, but eventually Poland, that was affected by this the most, revealed the potential main culprit. And you see this culprit in this image. Primnesium parvum, more commonly known as golden algae because of the phenomenon it tends to produce. It produces an algal bloom golden in color. And as you're probably aware, a lot of these blooms are very often very toxic in nature and can usually produce a lot of problems for any wildlife that finds itself inside the bloom. And so in essence, after two years of investigations, it was almost certainly established that this was actually a result of this algae blooming in the river, very likely because of a sudden increase of salt in the water and because this particular algae loves warm salty water that this river contained in the summer of 2022. And this basically became known as the golden algae hypothesis. But the main reason I wanted to start with this story is really because of the main culprit here. This particular algae is now the record holder for containing the largest protein ever discovered. And it's actually this protein responsible for the production of phycotoxin primnesin, a chemical with a formula you see right here, and a chemical that's extremely toxic to fish, that in essence resulted in the algal bloom that suddenly killed the fish. And so in essence, in this video, we're just going to discuss this protein, compare it to some of the other previous record holders, and talk about what we know and what we don't know. But I guess first, let's discuss the algae. So as you can see from this picture, this is actually a flagellated algae, meaning that it can easily move around. And this particular species has always been a bit of a concern because of the toxin it can produce. But interestingly, even though technically it can use photosynthesis to feed itself without the use of anything, just like a typical plant, it can also feed on organic material or basically other organisms, which is of course why it has two flagella that allow it to move really fast and even has an organ known as haptonema, which allows it to attach itself to various types of organisms. And we know that this unusual golden algae generally prefers to basically be photosynthetic, but in various situations when there are not enough nutrients, and for example lack of nitrogen and phosphorus, it tends to basically feed on everything else. And what's really bizarre about these little guys is that their toxins don't actually affect anything else except for fish. So normally with a lot of other blooms, we always hear warnings about going in the water because by basically touching the algae, or in case of animals like dogs licking the algae, this can often have very dangerous effects. But with the golden algae, it really only works on fish, which is very different from your typical red tide, like what you see right here, where the algae is dangerous to everyone. And this is actually important because turns out that this toxin is usually produced by these algae when they find themselves in conditions lacking phosphorus and nitrogen and have to suddenly become heterotrophic or basically start hunting for bacteria and cannot photosynthesize anymore, which is basically a type of physiological stress that seems to induce their behavior and the production of this toxin. And as a result of this, a lot of scientists believe that this is actually a kind of a defense mechanism or I guess a kind of an evolutionary advantage that allows these algae to remove any competition from the water so they can then basically just consume everything themselves and dominate certain environments. And though this is obviously just a hypothesis, we know that golden algae is extremely successful in most of the niches where they live and whenever they produce these toxins, they do indeed become the main species in the water. Interestingly enough, they're also responsible for the production of DMSP, which as you might have learned from one of the previous videos, 
that should be in the description, an organic compound that serves as a precursor to DMS, which we know for a fact is only produced by algae and is essentially a biosignature. And this is actually in regards to that study from, I think like a year ago, that claimed the discovery of DMS on a distant planet somewhere out there. So was it life? Check out that video in the description to find out more. And so the point is that these little guys are actually kind of exciting. But it's the discovery from this study that makes them even more exciting. Turns out that these toxins are produced by literally the largest protein we've ever seen. The protein the scientists are now referring to as PKZILA. A giant polyketide synthase, or basically a very large enzyme, responsible for the production of these toxins. And turns out it contains 45,212 amino acids. Basically making this an enormous structure, but whose enormous size does not have a very good explanation yet. You can actually see some of the other examples of proteins in one of the links in the description, but on average they usually contain anywhere from 50 to maybe 2,000 amino acids. And so finding something with over 45,000 is definitely unusual. But as you can see from this image, it's just a little bit bigger than the previous record holder. And here this one does actually make sense. This is known as Titan, and it's something that all of us contain in huge amounts. Actually, all of us contain at least half a kilogram, because this is the third most abundant protein inside our muscles. In this image, you can see it as those unusual red structures inside. But in a nutshell, Titan functions as a kind of a molecular spring responsible for elasticity inside all of our muscles. And as a result, it's extremely large and obviously needs to contain a lot of amino acids. And so the size of this protein definitely makes sense. But this one here, not so much. Why exactly does this unusual algae, that's just a few microns in size, contain something that's much larger than our muscle proteins? Why is it so complex and what purpose does its size serve? So obviously so far we know that this is an enzyme responsible for producing the toxin, but why the complexity and why the size? The toxin itself is actually not as complex and we know that a lot of other algae and obviously a lot of other animals produce toxins in much simpler ways. Moreover, nobody right now knows how this unusual tiny organism is able to produce such a huge complex molecule. So right now there are just a lot of unanswered questions and quite a few mysteries. But because of this discovery, scientists now think that they can actually use the detection of this protein to potentially test water before it becomes toxic and before it kills a lot of fish. In other words, by using similar testing to, for example, viral testing, they can possibly predict a golden algae bloom before it actually happens. Moreover, by studying what exactly happens inside this protein and how it's able to assemble this toxin, this could maybe lead to the production of new types of medicines or at least teach us how to assemble complex molecules much more effectively. But obviously those are just speculations for now. The only fact we have is that this is definitely the largest protein ever and it comes from a very strange algae that seems to really, really dislike fish. And so what exactly is happening here? And why this is so, we basically currently don't know. But once there are some additional answers or some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the other videos about algae or some other recent biological discoveries in some of the other videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing a membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.